So let's talk a little bit about critical reasoning. The more complex an issue, the more easily for people to find themselves believing false theories. The more complex, the more easy. The more complex the issue, the more information, the more facts, the more data points are needed to have a clear understanding, an accurate understanding of the issue. Consider a jigsaw puzzle with 10,000 pieces. And somebody gives you 12 of those pieces and asks you to tell you what the picture is. <laughs> Can you already see that would be difficult? I've got 12 pieces. 150 pieces. I've got 150, 10,000, I've got 150 pieces. 300 pieces. You see where I'm going with this? Now, the person with 300 pieces is going to have a better chance than the person with 12. The more pieces of data, accuracy increases the more data, facts, evidence that we include in our picture. That's why the Bible is to be taken as a whole. This is the problem with Christian theologies. Many of the doctrines, conclusions, teachings in Christianity are formed with limited data, not using all the pieces. Martin Luther the great reformer who was the originator and creator of penal substitution theology only accepted 62 books of the Bible. He rejected as inspired Revelation, Jude, James, and Hebrews. Think that through. What do we get in Revelation, Jude, James, and Hebrews? We get the great controversy. We get a war in heaven. We get a high priest that's working to heal our hearts and minds and transform us and write the law on the heart and mind. It moves completely away from a penal legal model into a healing restoration model, which Martin Luther did not have. Many Christians today limit their... So I'm going to suggest to you penal substitution is wrong okay it is not reality it's based on imperial human law rather than design law and it's based on just taking pieces here and there of the inspired record and rejecting or excluding pieces that don't fit uh, many christians uh today split the bible into two halves the old dispensation and the new dispensation the old testament and the new testament and they don't include the entire bible they don't see one whole story a human race became contaminated with sin in a terminal state and God promising in Genesis a Messiah who's going to fix the problem. And the entire Bible story is the story of the battle between the forces of heaven and the forces of Satan for the Messiah's coming to fix the sin problem and save mankind. That's the whole story. They don't see that. They actually see, I hear, I hear on Christian radio, it's unbelievable to me. Theology professors at different institutions world recognized teaching that in the Old Testament times people were saved by animal blood. They had to sacrifice animals in order to have their sins taken care of. It's ridiculous. It was only metaphor. It was symbol. This is an example of that concrete literalism we were talking about earlier. Not being able to abstract and apply a symbol to the larger reality. It was only because of faith in Christ. Abraham was saved by faith, not by animal sacrifices. I, it's funny you mention that. I, I just drove across the country twice, out okay. to Arizona and back, and driving through Middle America, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Panhandle of Texas, New Mexico. One of the one of the few stations on on that you can get on radio are these preachers, the, these Protestant and charismatic preachers, and they were saying the exact thing, the exact thing you're saying, saved by animal sacrifice. God, the, the, the only thing you need to know about God is he's sovereign and uh, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's the same legal, penal stuff day yep. after day. Weekday, Sunday, didn't matter all yep. the time. Yep. No, this is exactly right. So this type of thinking, uh, limited piece of data, distorted picture of reality. And that's where Christianity is today. The Jews, of course, deny the entire New Testament, and thus they have limited their understanding, and they have a distorted understanding of reality. Many Christians refuse the integrative evidence-based approach, and they only include the Bible in a literal way and refuse to harmonize with science and experience. Others who do value Scripture don't include all 66 
Or maybe they do say, I value all seats to six, but then they pick and choose a text here, a text there, and they don't include the texts that don't support the view. So thus, they dissect the Bible up to only include the texts that support their view. Another way to distort the picture, we've got a 10,000-piece puzzle. We want to get the best accurate picture of what it is. We need all the pieces. Another way to distort it, though, is to bring in pieces from another puzzle that aren't even part of this puzzle and include them into our puzzle. Okay? And this is what the Muslims and the Mormons do with the Book of Mormon and the, and the Koran. Now, they, they've got all this new supposed, and this is what people do with the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. And uh, some of these, uh, they bring this in, and then suddenly the, the whole uh, picture begins to distort in a different way. We at Come and Reason Ministries want to include all the evidence God has given. So all 66 books of scripture, plus the evidence he's revealed in science and nature, plus the evidences of real life experiences, harmonizing them together to get the most accurate picture. And this is what we present. We present the Bible as one story of the great controversy between good and evil and God's plan to reveal truth and heal the human species from the problem that became, came about when Adam chose to break trust with God. Then all the evidence together, we have the most accurate pictures of truth, of reality, always remaining open, because we're finite beings, to have our current view updated as new God-given pieces of information come in to our puzzle. In other words, we don't lock into a certain doctrine and reject unfolding truth because it wasn't there when we formed our opinion. We must also recognize, though, when we look at the actual threads of evidence, God-given threads of evidence, some pieces of evidence hold more value than other pieces of evidence. Foundational pieces of evidence, we call these touchstones or, or um, barometers or, or yardsticks or measuring sticks, pieces of evidence of which the other God-given evidence must be measured against. Or the border pieces of the The border or the border of the puzzle. That's another way. These are the border pieces. It doesn't go outside the border. That's usually the first thing that gets assembled. I love that. The first thing you assemble, isn't it true, the border? And the border pieces are God's design laws. If you don't understand God's design laws, then you interpret things that go outside of them and you're outside of the picture that God is giving us. And the law of liberty, the law of love, the law of exertion, the law of worship. These are design laws. And, and so many people have interpretations of Scripture that take God outside of the design laws and have God violating the law of liberty, which destroys love. So this is great. Um, so the design laws are the yardsticks and measure. And another one is we always must take Jesus as fully God. One of the other attacks, that Jesus is a barometer, Jesus is a touchstone. You come back to Jesus over and over again. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one, Jesus said. But in the theologies in this world that deny the triune God, Jesus is not fully God, he's a demigod. He's a created God. He's an offspring God. He came later. He, he's just an angel. He and so, Lucifer were brothers. Uh, he and Lucifer were brothers. Well, any type of distortion about the divinity of Christ changes the incomplete picture. Because now we actually don't know about God anymore. Or what we know becomes very bad. Mm. See, we don't know whether if we were to curse God, spit on him, crucify him, whether he would still love and forgive us. We know Jesus would. We don't know whether God would. What we do know is that God, in the view that Jesus is not fully God, it says this. Well, the one who's God is willing to sacrifice somebody else to protect himself. But we don't know whether he would sacrifice himself to protect us. And that's the heart of it, right there. Yeah. When Jesus is fully God, then we realize, hey, the one with all the power, the creator, he is of such a nature, such a character, such holiness, such purity, such love, that even if we were to try to kill him, he would not use his power to stop us. He would sacrifice himself for us. That is a God you can trust. But we only get there if Jesus is fully God. Anything that un So Jesus is a touchstone. And there are attacks on the Trinity that are trying to undermine the divinity of Christ, which changes the entire narrative and changes the entire picture. And most of the time, it's because they're already starting at a false narrative, human law model. The problem is that we're in trouble with the deity. We need somebody to pay the penalty. Jesus came to live a sinful life, and he did that in order to pay God. It wasn't really to, sh to reveal God. It was just to, to, uh, to achieve the payment necessary God needed. 
that type of thing, which is all distorted. So why is it necessary for every person to fully be fully persuaded in their own mind? Well, what happens if a person believes something because someone else told them, but they haven't actually been fully persuaded? What happens? Two things. One of two things. Either they don't really believe it, they just conform, which means they're being dishonest in heart, and they're really ready to rebel at the, as soon as they feel they can be free to rebel. Or, if they're not settled, but they actually genuinely do, they're a true believer, they believe it, but they don't have a reason why. They believe it because the person they love told them, and they trust them. And so I believe them because someone so told me. But they don't have any reason why. They are vulnerable to be converted to a new belief by a charismatic, dynamic speaker or presenter, or somebody else that comes along that wins their trust. Their belief is not based on evidence, facts, understanding reality. They're based on trusting some other person. So just win their trust, and you can get them to believe something new. So they remain vulnerable. Those individuals will be quite vulnerable to being deceived in the end. What's another, another problem that's for, for those who believe the truth because someone else in authority gave them the truth, and it is the truth, it's like the person who has a math teacher who gives them the right answers, and they memorize the right answers, and they know the right answers. They are the right answers to these particular problems, but they have no idea how to do math. Many Christians are raised in Christian homes and indoctrinated with a certain doctrinal system of belief, and they might have the right belief about baptism or a state of the dead or some doctrine, but they have no idea why that's the right belief and the implications of what it means. And when we understand the truth and why it's that way, then we can reason our way through other problems that are new and, and we haven't been given the answer for. 